buy health care, reduce poverty, combat climate change, and mitigate crime-related incidences. However, it is important to approach AI with both excitement and caution, as artificial intelligence can become more sophisticated it is essential that we consider its ethical implications. In other words, AI can be both good and bad. AI can be both good and bad. Therefore, we must ensure that as consumers, we use AI in a good way and not so much an evil way. And as AI technology continues to develop and mature, we can expect to see even more groundbreaking applications emerge in years to come. One area where AI is expected to have a, per a particularly significant impact is in the consumer sector. As AI-powered technologies have the potential to to make our lives easier, more efficient, and more enjoyable in countless ways. Public and private school students across New Providence march for peace. The Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training, along with participating schools, took part in the National Peace Begins With Me March and Rally on March 15, 2024. I'm Carissa Williamson, and this has been Your Government in Action, a presentation of Bahamas Information Services. Join us on Tuesday evenings where we bring you highlights, coverage, and information as we continue to do what we do best, linking people and government. the ZNS Network, the People Station. Coming up in the news, the Grand Bahama Port Authority opens a new satellite office in the nation's capital. We have the details. Plus, sales are showing promising signs for a major development on Grand Bahama. And Member of Parliament for West Grand Bahama and Bimini addresses concerns over the constituency's deteriorating road conditions. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Azure Quant. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping the news this evening, the Grand Bahama Port Authority is making a bold move to the nation's capital, opening a new satellite office. This office is the first of its kind, and Chief Investment Officer Derek Newbold is expressing excitement about the opportunities it brings. Here's that report. We want to make sure that all Bahamians and residents are fully apprised of what's happening in Freeport so that they can position themselves to be a part of what we believe will be one of the fastest growing and most robust economies in the Caribbean. The decision to establish an office in Nassau comes at a time as Grand Bahama has earmarked over $2 billion for development projects. The Grand Bahama Port Authority Chief Investment Officer Derek Newbold says this move is to enhance its presence in the financial and business hub of the Bahamas. Newbold emphasizes the opportunity to foster a greater focus on cultivating the market for new domestic investments, highlighting Nassau's status as home to numerous critical stakeholders, making it an ideal location for this expansion. We felt that it was time to establish an investment promotions office here in New Providence to educate the business community on the investment opportunities that exist 
in Freeport. We will be facilitating one-on-one -on -one meetings and consultations regarding investment opportunities, how to establish a business in Freeport, and how individuals can take advantage of the unbelievable land offerings available in Freeport for commercial and residential development. Newbold underscores the importance of involving Bahamians in the development of Freeport, stating that many projects are nearing fruition. Buy some land, invest in some land, build a second home, invest in some commercial development for real estate, um, set up a business and establish a presence there or expand to Freeport. And so it's going to help us to grow our critical mass, but it's also going to introduce Bahamians in general to more investment opportunities so that they can become critical stakeholders in this economy. The key advantage and benefit that businesses, local businesses, will be able to take advantage of is being able to operate their business with a customs bond. And that customs bond will allow them to take advantage of total import duty exemption on capital equipment and supplies related to the operation of their business. Newbold also notes that this venture aims to attract residents from Nassau, ensuring that Bahamians are fully aware of the opportunities available in Freeport. The satellite office is located in the One West Plaza on Windsor Field Road in New Providence. While a major $250 million development on Grand Bahama promises to elevate the luxury experience for property owners and guests. In this report, our Raven Davis speaks with the chief marketing officer of the Weller Development Group, who reveals that sales on Grand Bahama are already showing promising signs for its future growth and prosperity. Here's that report. People are very excited. The market has been very excited to see the rendering. That's Matt Rienzo, Chief Marketing Officer and Chief of Staff with Weller Development, speaking exclusively with our ZNS News team on the heels of the recently unveiled renderings for the Sixth Census Grand Bahama Development. He says renowned architectural firm Olsen Kundig, known for their seamless integration of design with the natural environment, has been tapped to design 28 beachside and canalside homes, marking a significant milestone for the project. When you look at our designs, they're, they're very open, they're very um, airy, and they give wonderful views uh, to the canal side on the north or to the ocean on the south. And then they also open up to interior gardens and to lush plantings throughout the property with lots of view sheds in different directions. And residential sales on Grand Bahamas set for quarter one of 2024 are already showing promising signs following the release of those renderings just over one week ago. So we're working with H.C. Christie's and uh, here locally in the Bahamas, and we're working with Bespoke Real Estate, who's a New York-based firm also with offices in Miami and L.A. And those, those two firms working together um, are fielding all of these inquiries. The homes will be priced uh, from $10 million up to uh, around $20 million. Rianzo says the development team, consisting of Weller Development Partners and Pegasus Capital Advisors, are tapping into a new market on the island while ensuring the project remains economically viable and environmentally sustainable throughout its operations. For instance, they don't use any plastic in their supply chain. Environmental story is not only one that we tell, but it's one that we'll be living, um, not only through the operations of the resort, the construction of the resort and the residential, and then the life that these people will live when they're living in the residences. Also central to the project is the wide-ranging benefits that will reportedly resonate throughout the island, providing a general boost to the economy. Uh, the construction jobs that will be in place during the life of the construction project, and then also the permanent jobs that will be available. The development, which focuses on high-end living and delivering a beautiful resort experience to guests and property owners alike, is scheduled to open its doors in 2026. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Raven Davis. 
Thank you, Raven. In other news, Member of Parliament for West Grand Bahama and Bimini Kingsley Smith addressing the mounting concerns over deteriorating road conditions in West Grand Bahama. The MP says he has been receiving numerous calls in recent weeks regarding the roads in the West and is working to rectify this issue immediately. We are cognizant of the fact that it needs immediate attention and we are doing so. As member of parliament for West Grand Bahama, I would have initiated the calls with Ministry of Works to ensure that the patch, the coal patches that are needed to repair those potholes are brought to the island as quickly as possible. Smith says this is just a temporary fix. In early March, the Minister of Works and Family Island Affairs, the Honorable Clay Sweeting, announced during his mid-year budget contribution that a comprehensive plan is underway to fix the main roads in West Grand Bahama. The project also entails the construction of sidewalks and seawalls. You would have heard from the Minister of Public Works. You would have also heard from the Attorney General that some road works for Grand Bahama in the amount of $100 million will be executed with 60 miles of road work being done. That's reconstruction, resurfacing of the roads in West Grand Bahama, 60 miles. Smith says the Davis administration is committed to ensuring long-term solutions and road safety for all residents. Well, the National Training Agency is reaffirming its dedication to empowering Grand Bahamas workforce, preparing to launch its mandatory workforce preparation program. This initiative aims to arm young individuals with the essential tools necessary for seamless integration into the workplace. So you go through four weeks of preparation, soft skills training with some of our leading industry experts afterwards. There are times where we have something called skills training, something more strategic in the realms of office procedures or any other kind of course that we have available, or we do something called internship apprenticeship, where for 10 weeks, we link them with persons who are experts in the industry. The 16th cohort of the program will convene in April, and Miller is encouraging the public to take advantage of this free yet advantageous opportunity. That would, would prompt this training and this internship style to give those who have not gotten a chance, the chance to get into the workforce and actually have the tools to succeed. Well, the public could come to our office, we're upstairs, in the National Insurance Building on the second floor. We open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and you're able to come in and register. For further information, the public can also call 351-6421 or 727-1418. Well, the celebration of women continuing this month with a spotlight on law enforcement in Grand Bahama. On Monday morning, the Royal Bahamas Police Force hosted a special event dedicated to honoring the resilience and achievements of women in policing. Here's our Raven Davis. It is often said that women are the backbone of society. Well, that sentiment rings true as the Royal Bahamas Police Force proudly hosts a special International Women's Day breakfast, spotlighting the dedication and achievements of women in law enforcement under the theme, Invest in Women, Accelerate Progress. The occasion marked by singing, elegance and gift giving at the Albert J. Miller Station featured guest speaker Alison Lavardi, who shared empowering words urging women to stay true to themselves. This month's theme, Inspire Inclusion, is just that for us. That for we as women, we to band together and to always seek unity. And in the workplace, we need to seek inclusion through diversity. So the acronym shared today, PhD, is for all of us to show up as women in our true self and be P, passionate, 
H, hungry and D, driven. Also in attendance, Assistant Commissioner of Police for the Northern Bahamas, Shanta Knowles, who highlighted the historic enlistment of the first six female officers in November of 1964, whose entry paved the way for all female officers. Knowles emphasizing the importance of supporting and celebrating each other's accomplishments as women. Even though our, our circumstances may differ, our respect, bond, love, and support for each other can help us to overcome any limitations and achieve great things together. So let us strive to empower one another Echoing her sentiments via a special Zoom call with National Security Minister, the Honorable Wayne Monroe. All you need to do is look at the armed forces to say that regardless of the fact that women movement to these organizations may have come late, and it did come late, if you think about when the first females were recruited for these forces, you will see that women have made massive in all of the services. Now, according to ACP notes, celebrations were held on other islands as well, as March is widely recognized as Women's Month, demonstrating appreciation for women within the organization. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Raven Davis. Switching gears now tonight, a mother is sending a heartfelt appeal for assistance, seeking help for her seven-year-old son battling with club feet. Born with this condition, the family's journey hasn't been easy, but now they face the challenge of affording surgery and medical care. Here's that report. He's our baby and, and he's adorable. He's very smart and he just needs someone to just just help us so he can get a chance to be normal. Constant Dinos Pelicanos, affectionately known as Dinos, was born seven years ago as a bouncing seven pound, 6.7 ounce baby boy to Georgette Bullard and her husband. However, Dinos was born with a condition known as club feet, which is a congenital condition where a baby's foot is twisted, out of shape, or position affecting one or both feet. Along with the, the club feet, um, at the age of four and a half, he was diagnosed with uh, level four autism with severe ADHD. He never let it hold him back. You know, he, the doctor has never seen that before, that he can actually run and do things with two cut feet. And they said his balance is remarkable. Despite facing this health challenge, Dinos continues to excel academically at the Beacon School, where he shines in the majority of his subjects. But it was in 2019 where the family experienced the devastation of Hurricane Dorian while residing in Abaco. Trapped in the midst of the hurricane's fury, they were forced to relocate to Freeport, Grand Bahama, where the father had to switch jobs to make ends meet. My husband had to take the kids, the two boys, put them in the kitchen cabinet, take his jacket off, put the jacket on me, take the baby who was only hours old and wrap it up in two blankets, put it in my jacket, zip it up and shove me underneath the kitchen cabinet and then took the fridge and bring the fridge down and push it up to the cupboard so that he, if the tornado wouldn't suck us up. What we went through, we, we tried to just stick together and try to deal with it the best way we could, but it's, that's why it's so hard for us right now. It's, it's not easy to ask yeah. somebody for help. Bullard says Dinos' club feet is treatable, but the financial burden has become overwhelming for her family, now making this plea to the public. To fix his feet, uh, it, will, it will cost $600 <laughs> a week. He has six weeks of casting, and that's before the surgery, to bring his heel down. And only then, when they have successfully brought the heel down, that they can operate on the foot to correct the ankle, to correct the whole foot. And that's a process that I can't afford. We have a GoFundMe page that his, his sister and brother has set up for him. It's called the Surgery for Constantinos Takis Pelicanos. And in addition to the GoFundMe account, George Ed Bullard can be contacted at 809-7275 or donations can be sent to her Island Luck account, number 140808, or at Joseph Pelicanos' Commonwealth Bank account, number 105-101-2007, branch number 21105. 
When we come back, grade one students at a local primary school got the opportunity to demonstrate their abilities in learning during a spelling bee competition. That story, sports and more, when the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, continues. You have enough things to worry about. Living in a world that can seem opposite of the things you are trying to accomplish. I mean, I, I can need a little help with this month, this. We're here to let you know that you don't have to go at it alone. Choose peace of mind. Choose comfort. Choose CD. Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. Celebrate Easter weekend at Portobello's Restaurant by the Grand Lacayan. Children 5 to 12 years are half price, and children under 5 eat free. Dinner buffet on Good Friday and all-you-can-eat Easter Sunday brunch. See you there. Elegant, fashionable, bold, an Easter hat parade. Mark your calendars, get your hats ready. Be a part of this spectacular display of hats. Sunday, March 24th at 5 p.m. at the Church of God Prophecy Call Room. An event you won't soon forget. Weight management and diabetes will be the topic on ZNS Health Zone. I started my weight loss journey about six months ago, August, and it has been life-changing for me. The thing is, you have to start where you are, trust the process. You're not gonna always feel like doing it every day, but one step at a time, a little bit at a time, try to be deliberate about what it is that you wanna achieve. On Monday, March 25th at 9 p.m. on the ZNS Network. Your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. Grade 1 students at Freeport Primary School got the opportunity to demonstrate their abilities and learning during a special spelling bee competition. The students taking turns during 16 rounds of spelling geared towards improving their vocabulary and development of understanding. Coordinator and teacher Samantha Cooper tells us that this is the first time Grade 1 students participated in a spelling bee at the school. Adults usually around the school, um, all of the clubs are catered to the upper primary grades and there's nothing really for the lower primary. So, you know, that's how the idea came up, just giving them the chance to shine and demonstrate their skills because the kids have been working hard all school year and this was just a wonderful opportunity to demonstrate that. Cooper adds that she was pleased with the kids' performance, noting that sometimes children, even at the smallest age, can be underestimated. The winner of the competition and her competitors tell us how they feel. I was nervous and I was good. Feel good about spelling. Why do you feel good about spelling? Because I like learning. Congratulations to all of the kiddies involved. And now it's time for a look at our new weekly segment that allows consumers of the Grand Bahama Power Company to pose any question to GBPC officials. We present to you Ask GBPC. How can I report a power outage or an electrical emergency? In the event of a power outage or electrical emergency, your safety and convenience are our top priorities at GBPC. We understand that such situations can be inconvenient, and we are committed to resolving them swiftly. To report a power outage or any electrical emergency, please utilize one of the following contact methods. Emergency hotline, call 352-8411. This line is available 24-7 for urgent matters regarding power outages or electrical emergencies. Our toll-free number, dial 300-4826. 
Our toll-free number is dedicated to handling power outages and electrical emergencies, accessible from anywhere in the Bahamas. Our Facebook page, reach out to us through our official Facebook page. Simply send us a message detailing your issue and our team will respond promptly to assist you. No matter which method you choose, rest assured that our team is dedicated to restoring your power and ensuring your safety as quickly as possible. That's a look at stories making news, but don't go away. The latest in sports and your local weather forecast is up next. On May 4th and 5th, the sun will shine down on the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Hundreds of the world's best track athletes from more than 40 countries will compete to qualify for their spot at the Paris Olympics. Hi, I want to put some shoes on your feet. Hi, I want to put some shoes on your feet. I still want to put shoes on your feet. I want to put some shoes on your feet. And I still want to put shoes on your feet. We, we still, still want, want to put, put shoes on, on your feet. feet. Two locations to put shoes on your feet. Downtown Freeport and now our newest location in the Carmichael City Shopping Plaza, right behind the Walk Up Wendy's, Carmichael Road West. Sedanes Northern Service brings you to a new series highlighting the remarkable achievements of students from across the Northern Bahamas. I just walked the hall and say, excuse me, Miss Cooper, can you please say that again? And then she just have to read everything over and I get everything correct. Beyond accolades, we honor those students who have faced adversity head on, demonstrating resilience and determination on their path to success. I'm Jolanda Thompson Everest. Get ready to be inspired by the stellar students of the North this and every Wednesday. Your number one news team covering the North. Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. The Grand Bahama Flag Football League kicked off its season on Sunday with some key matchups. Here's your Tuesday evening check on sports with our Jay Philippe. I'm Jay Philippe and welcome to sports. Week one of the Grand Mama Flag Football League kicked off last week Sunday with four games on schedule. But let's begin with track and field. Here's Shane Stubbs. The island relays didn't disappoint at the Grand Bahama Sports Complex. The Mayor Shipley got things going on the track, bringing it home for Morgan State University in the 4 by 100 meter relay. First time out of the country. Just a great time, great experience. Just try to put the work in so we know what we need to work on, what we need to push back on, what we need to up tempo more just to get that first one up under our, under our feet. And it was a special weekend for Kaylee Jameson who held on in a close finish of the women's 800 meters. I hit my time that I was aiming for. My birthday was yesterday. Enjoyed. I did a lot of fun things. I'm loving Bahamas. The UB Mingos would run away with the man's 800 meter gold thanks to Levine Joseph. Coming into the race, I felt comfortable, confident, and that's pretty much it. The whole plan was to execute the race as best as I could. Grand Bahamian Canton Roker dominated in the man's 400 meters as he gets set for the outdoor season. Just come out, execute everything my coach taught me, and stop fun during the race. It helped me realize exactly where I'm at, when I need to focus on next, and when I need to attack. After so many spirited races, now it's time to get ready for the 2025 edition of the Relays. For ZNS Total Sports, I'm Shane Stubbs. Sticking with track, Grand Bayman coach Cordell McNabb will lead Team Bahamas as the head coach of the Crifter Track and Field team. The games will take place in Grenada March 30th through April 1st at the Karani James Stadium. To be in charge of the Crifter team, which is one of the most touted or recognized um, youth uh, programs, 
it's really um, uplifting and I give thanks to those who supported it and nominated me uh, for this purpose. We're expecting more competition, we're expecting a tougher competition, but the level of qualifi uh, qualifications right now with the athletes, we expect to do extremely well. And finally in sports, caused some opening week of the Grand Rama Flag Football League. In Game 1, Buckeye Oilers shut out Mobile Go Titans 6-0. Still in men's play, Coca-Cola Knights defeated Container Port Stackers 12-0. And the feature game saw Tree Links boys winning over Sky's Limit Rock Boys 12-6. Now on the ladies' side, RTV Titans the W against Fidelity Flames 12-0. Ladies and gents, that is your quick check on sports. I'm Jay Philippe, as always. Be blessed. Thank you, Jay. And here's a check on your local weather forecast, sponsored by Royal Star Assurance. Tonight's weather forecast is brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. Because yeah, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Stay with us, our Facebook friend of the day is up next. We all need to save. Save time, gas, and money. Shopping at Save More can help you do just that. Make us your first stop for all your prescription needs and medical supplies. Get all your health and beauty items at the same time. And don't miss our huge choice of snacks to satisfy your cravings. And the largest vitamin selection and over-the-counter relief products. Need diapers and other baby care items? First stop. The new section for makeovers, cosmetics, and beautiful jewelry will make you sparkle for that next special event. Save More Drugs, your more store. My experience, it started out a bit rocky. They would call us freshers, some of us, uh, because we, you know, have no technical background in IT. But they really laid the foundation down for us, so we were able to learn the very basics first. And then at the end of the course, uh, we were to the level of an associate, so we can actually start working in IT as soon as we exit the program. One of the experiences I think was unique was the quality of the Trino. Madri, to me, and, and I think the others would share the same experience, is that she's a quality trainer. You, le you leave the course knowing exactly what you need to know to build an application from scratch to finished product. And the foundation that she, she gives you is, is really spot on. We are prime as Bahamians. You know, we are competitive by nature. So I know that we are competitive with sports, with our junk canoe, but we can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the world when it comes to tech as well as, as we apply ourselves. And I really believe that. Your number one news team covering the North. Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Jay Sweeting, you are our Facebook friend of the day. Little Jay's turned seven years old. You're definitely a big boy now. And that's going to do it tonight for us here in the North. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Azure Quant, but be sure to stay tuned. The Bahamas Tonight continues. in the Bahamas tonight, the national report, BPL union leaders search clarified, NIB increased breakdown, a retired police testifies, and in sports, UB Mingo soccer team competes. The Bahamas tonight, the national report starts now. ZNS News is brought to you by the new BTC. Fiber is here. Faster, stronger, more reliable. Together, we are unstoppable. Switch today.
Dawn Davis, and this is The Bahamas Tonight, The National Report. Thanks so much for tuning in. Come July 1st, employers and employees will be splitting a 1.5% contribution rate increase to the National Insurance Board. The news of this increase has ignited a firestorm of controversy and concern. A lot of it, though, may be premature or even misplaced. And now, NIB officials are hoping to set the record straight. Two of the board's senior members spoke exclusively with Corbell Pyfrom. The proposed 1.5% NIB increase will only improve the board's contribution collection by about $2 million per month, still only half of the $4 million in collections it needs. And what longtime board member, now consultant Jason Moxie hastens to point out is that this increase doesn't cover all benefits. That does not take into consideration the payment of sickness, maternity, unemployment, funeral, and under the industrial branch, injury, disablement, death, and free medical care. Nor does it take into consideration the administrative costs. The number of persons becoming pensioners has soared to nearly 50,000. And up till now, NIB has only hiked its contribution rate once, despite repeated recommendations to the contrary. The cost of pensions to the board each month for 46 plus thousand pensioners is at a cost of in excess of $27 million per month. Revenue from contribution is approximately $23 million per month. So on the pension side of the scheme alone, the board is experiencing a $4 million deficit. Of course, recent extraordinary events like Hurricane Dorian and the COVID-19 pandemic have had tremendous impact on NIB. The board's Deputy Director of Corporations and Actuarial Services, Tammy Francis. Many persons for the first time in their lives having to seek assistance from NIB. So NIB became relevant. NIB became Without NIB, I, 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 I would hate to have, have seen what would have happened to the Bahamas without NIB during the COVID-19 pandemic. The 1.5% rate hike in contributions is expected to take effect July 1st. Public reaction, as expected, has been mixed, to say the least. Businesses, too, have expressed concern, but their worries may be a bit unfounded. If you have a payroll of $50,000 per month, that will only cost you an additional $375 more per month if you pay 0.75% or $4,500 annually. So it's not a substantial increase at once. These NIB officials hear the noise that's out there. Nobody wants an increase. And let's face it, there hasn't been one in more than a decade. But the reality is people are retiring sooner, living longer, and having fewer babies. There's just no other option. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Corvell Pfeiffer. Thanks a lot, Corvell. Now to another story we've been following. A union president is calling foul after multiple trips by police to his home in just days. He spoke with Cleopatra Murphy today and explains what he claims amounts to harassment must up. Intimidation tactics, that is, according to Bahamas Electrical Workers Union President Kyle Wilson, after he claims about eight police officers showed up at his property Monday night with a search warrant, the latest of several trips. Wilson, who was not at home at the time, says his phone kept ringing. Right after me and to check my phone, and it was my parents and my brother reached out to me saying that there were policemen at the home again for like the third time in about four days this time. They came with a warrant to search the property um, for dangerous drugs and stolen items and ammunition and such. Wilson, who has been vocal against government's rumored plans to enter into a public-private partnership with a local and foreign company to manage transmission, distribution and energy generation at BPL, says he has been the target of a smear campaign in recent weeks, calling the police action into question. With tears streaming down his face, he says his biggest concern is his parents. I'm not afraid, but Please leave my parents alone and leave my dwelling place alone. They're going too far, and enough is enough. I'm not afraid to speak, but you mess with my family, and it hurts when you do that, okay? Everybody knows my character. I'm not afraid I had to call this morning to the pastor for prayers for my family because they hurt me and they're scared. But I'm not afraid to speak. I'm not. And all they're doing is voicing my opinion, and all they're doing is saying what the members ask me. 
So Wilson says it is taking a toll on his parents, but insists he will not be cowed. The more you do this to me, the more emboldened I'm gonna get, okay? But please, leave my family alone. There's no secret that all of a sudden now all these attacks on social media, all these attacks on what's happened, for what? He acknowledges police may have a legitimate investigation, and if someone makes a complaint, they have the right to investigate. But he says in the context of what has been happening it is more than a little suspicious. For The Bahamas Tonight, I'm Cleopatra Murphy. Thanks a lot, Cleo. Police are denying that their search of a property owned by Bahamas Electrical Workers Union President Kyle Wilson was in an intimidation attempt and also reject claims that the home he occupied was searched. Inspector Desiree Ferguson of the Police Communications Department is adamant police launched a legitimate investigation. Police did search a property situated in southeastern New Providence one of which has multiple proper one of which has multiple structures one including mr wilson's residence police went there based on a complaint that was lodged regarding a stealing matter that led officers there where officers were armed with a search warrant they did subsequently search several properties correction several residents on that property at no time was Mr. Wilson's residence searched. Wilson confirms the homes of Wilson's tenants were searched, also revealing that something ultimately was found during the exercise. As a result of that search warrant being executed, officers did recover some stolen items on that property. Again, the police are at no point is going to use any intimidation factor, particularly when there is an official complaint lodged. We have an obligation and we have a responsibility to do due diligence to investigate any matters that are brought to our attention. And with that said, Mr. Wilson's status or his title has no bearing on this investigation. And so we remain a professional police force. And still to come, the Prime Minister's tours Botswana's main financial center. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, The National Report. This portion of the news is brought to you by Folk Call Smart Pass, the smart way to pay at the pump. Mids of our iconic things, places, and people is Commonwealth Bank. Increasing access, sponsoring dreams, working alongside Bahamians to increase the quality of their lives for more than 60 years. Commonwealth Bank, nothing more than being Bahamian. Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. to different KFC menus to see if the flavor can enhance any moment. And at the first bite, the party began. We repeated the experiment during the day, during business hours, on weekends, with sunshine, with rain. It's confirmed any moment can be a KFC moment. Big day here in Eleuthera as young people from across the island participate in this year's Junior John Canoe competition. This year we've increased our donation by 50% to $75,000. We're also connecting these young people with our Disney creatives so that they can teach our creatives about John Canoe and our Disney creatives can teach them about the careers that are involved in the kinds of things they're doing as they prepare for Junior John Canoe this season. John Canoe is an expression, the spirit, the passion of the people of the Bahamas. The adrenaline rush and the music it's your soul, you just move. 
I'm really excited that the Disney Cruise Line helps get more instruments, like hookahs and drums. I cannot express the gratitude to Disney Cruise Line for the genuine nature of our culture, junk food. Disney could have chosen anywhere in the world, but they chose Eleuthera. <laughs> The luncheon? Why are you always worried about food? No, about how we gotta pay a little more for national insurance. Mildred, you talking fool. I can't afford to pay that. And you always cry and pour them out. It ain't gonna be much. Boss still gotta pay. Voice of July 2024. Oh, that gal wait to get my little extra pension. You ain't lie about that, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that's what did happen, my boy Tony. Oh, yeah. During the pandemic. Uh-huh. Oh. That's same unemployment benefit. And guess what? What? Susan, <laughs> I think she'd get a pregnancy benefit, eh? You mean maternity benefit, eh? So now, we gotta do our part to make sure we get our pension. All right, well, let me try and go back to my busy boss. <laughs> Abaco Big Bird is revamping the way they farm with its $45,000 hatchery, which has recently been brought on stream. Farm operations manager Lance Pender tells us this will revolutionize production efforts. We've been having a really tough time getting the young chickens, which has really hampered our, our growth a lot. So we decided to put in a small hatchery. This is really a test hatchery for us right now, but it could supply like 60% of our needs um, at this time. And what it does is it gives us more options to find source. Like it's eat, you can source eggs in Europe, but chicks are a lot more difficult. Or it can source the eggs in the U.S. Pender says the farm can get some 5,000 birds from one batch every three weeks. He adds that they'll be ready for market in about two months. So this is two months worth of food that we already have in the country on hand. So it, it you know, just extends our our food supply if we have any shortages because it's already food that's here. So how does this whole thing work? Pinder explains. So what happens is the eggs come in when they're, um, they come in cool, they have to be 65 degrees, so it stops the, uh, the embryo from developing. So they come in chilled, and then we load them into this, these are called the setters. These three machines here, these are the setters. They each hold 2,160 eggs. They'll be in that chamber for 18 days. From there, the eggs move to the hatcher chambers. So the hatchers are a little different. The eggs go in baskets inside on their, on their side, and where, if you saw it here, they were point, pointed down. And then they're in there for three days. And after three days, we go in there, and all the chicks are hatched out, and we carry them and put them in the barn. And then they're in the barn for anywhere from six to seven weeks, depending on the size bird that we need. From there, the birds are packaged and shipped off to market at multiple locations across the country. Pinder adds that the farm hopes to expand its operations soon. Keeping you in the know with Good to Grow, I'm Leah Cooper.
Minister, the Prime Minister, the Honorable Philip Davis, making an historic move during his official visit to Botswana today. During his tour of the Bank of Botswana, Prime Minister Davis unveiled a blueprint for collaboration that strengthens financial ties between Africa and the Caribbean, heralding a new era of economic partnership and innovation. Central to this vision is a joint financial task force, regulatory frameworks, financial inclusion, and digital banking, and facilitating trade and investment. The blueprint envisions transformative cooperation through initiatives like a bilateral payment system or shared digital currency and developing human capital through joint educational initiatives. As the Bahamas prepares to host the African Export-Import Banks meeting this summer, Prime Minister Davis challenged both regions to see the vast oceans as bridges for collaboration and shared prosperity. Prime Minister Davis is expected to launch a major initiative in the coming weeks, the Bahamas being a major bridge between Africa and the Caribbean bank industry. Meantime, Economic Affairs Minister Senator the Honorable Michael Halkidis led the delegation officially visiting the Botswana Innovative Hub today. The group explored the hub's advanced technologies and innovative strategies and discussed the potential for the Bahamas to adopt similar approaches, particularly in enhancing the ecosystem for small and medium-sized enterprises through the Small Business Development Center. Minister Halkidis expressed his enthusiasm about the insights gained from the visit stating the spirit of innovation and the drive to transform challenges into opportunities at the Botswana Innovation Hub is exactly what the government aims to instill right here in the Bahamas. Opposition Michael Pintar revealing today that the FNM was invited to be a part of the government's state visit to the Republic of Botswana, but chose to decline the offer for a number of reasons. Today at an FNM event, party leader Pintard explained why now isn't the right time for that kind of travel. Let me say our primary reason for not accepting uh, the invitation is we believe the scarce resources of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas right now should be used to deal with the most pressing set of issues that face our people. We have promised a halfway house for women and girls who live in terrible conditions under domestic violence, etc. And, and $500,000 was the allocation. This is more than two budgets ago. We've not seen, we haven't seen the first trench in the ground for the footer, for the foundation to, to be poured. This trip alone, if the report is correct, that there are some 22 persons uh, paid for by the, by the government of the Bahamas, this trip alone would comfortably be between four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars If going to Orlando was $200,000 uh, for a much smaller delegation. So certainly we were not going to be a part of that for a state visit. Prime Minister Davis confirming in a statement late this evening that the FNM leader was invited to Botswana and it's too bad he said no. Prime Minister Davis claims Pintard missed an opportunity to learn something from a country with one of the world's fastest growing economies. The Prime Minister contends though that the world is changing quickly and the FNM is simply out of their depth. Suddenness News has learned that 44-year-old Bahamian fugitive Stanford Jamal Omar Bastian was recently arrested in the United States. Reports reaching our newsroom state Bastian has been wanted by local authorities since 2009 for murder and firearm possession. This is a developing story we're continuing to follow. For over a decade, there's been countless efforts to create a conditional release program for offenders sentenced to prison. And now, with the almost certain passage of the conditional release for offenders bill in view, officials met with residents of the Bahamas Department of Corrections to hear their views. Corval Pyfram was there. We have gotten some good ideas. We have made some, some enhancements. And we are about to move forward. Acting Commissioner at the Department of Correctional Services, Don Clare, is talking about ideas gleaned from a series of nationwide consultations held in anticipation of the conditional release bill. Monday's meeting now gave those currently incarcerated at the Foxville facility a chance to give their input. What if I don't do construct, um, other stuff like that, so I'm just asking. Um, I've been in jail from 2014. I served five of them, yes, but I have to go ten years now. 
The inmate spoke directly to National Security Minister Wayne Monroe. Conditional release, he says, will mean for BDOX residents either probation, suspended sentences, or parole. However, this will also mean giving up some things, too. When this bill is passed, we intend we will be doing away with remission for good behavior. The chance for correctional residents to have this level of engagement with the figures of authority are far and few between. Minister Monroe wants it to be an education for all, including those employers who will take on some of those soon-to-be newly conditionally released residents. The issue will be this. We have employers now who take people on in the intramural work scheme, and we expect that that will continue. 20 persons will make up the parole board and will meet monthly to decide on eligibility. Under this new bill, persons sentenced to life imprisonment could one day be free. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Corbell Pyfram. A retired police superintendent testified in the Supreme Court today that he led a team of officers to Long Island back in May of 2022 to follow up on an investigation relating to the fraud at the Water and Sewage Corporation. The retired officer Bradley Pratt said he and his team went to Aaron's car rental where they photographed three SUVs and a van believed to have been appropriated through criminal means. He also testified, among other things, that he viewed and photographed properties and graves Long Island and Deadman's Key, allegedly purchased by former Water and Sewage Executive age Chairman rather Adrian Gibson, valued at $525,000. The senior officer said Adrian Gibson was cautioned and arrested in connection with this matter. Under cross-examination, the senior police officer denied that Water and Sewage headquarters was used as a police station, maintaining that official interviews took place at CDU. We still have more news to come, but Marcellus Hall has a look at what's coming up in sports. Marcellus? Sports for the night, local hot rodding taking center stage. Details ahead in sports. In the yellow elder garden, Ali and her cousins listen to Grammy share tales. The 70s so sweet, with themed costumes and dancing feet. Then came the brass, reaching new heights, a symphony of Bahamian nights. The 2000s, the yellow elder, a symbol of pride. Grammy's legacy in view as Ali dances in her yellow elder costume. We are alive. It is a big day here in Eleuthera as young people from across the island participate in this year's Junior John Canoe competition. This year we've increased our donation by 50% to $75,000. We're also connecting these young people with our Disney creatives so that they can teach our creatives about John Canoe and our Disney creatives can teach them about the careers that are involved in the kinds of things they're doing as they prepare for Junior John Canoe this season. Jonku is an expression, the spirit, the passion of the people of the Bahamas. The adrenaline rush when the music hits your soul, you just move. I'm really excited that the Disney Cruise Line helps get more instruments, like hookalakas and drums. I cannot express the gratitude to Disney Cruise Line for the genuine nature of our culture, John Canoe. Disney could have chosen anywhere in the world, but they chose Eleuthera. <laughs> After 51 years, Popeyes is crashing the wings party with five flavors. Makes no sense it took so long. Crispy outside, juicy inside. Who are you? We don't make sense. We make chicken. Y'all good? Popeyes new chicken wings make no sense. Marinated in Louisiana spices, hand battered and flipped, and then we have the audacity to call all five flavors fast food. Someone should really say something or <clears throat> order something. Love that chicken from Popeyes. Now available at Popeyes in Nassau. Are you or a loved one under medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Ports International is the largest home health care supplier. Medical supplies at the very best price. And you can even shop online. From hospital beds to wound care, wheelchairs to walkers, Ports is a one-stop shop for your medical supplies and we accept insurance. We have online shopping and two locations to serve you at the Airport Industrial Park and Shirley Street. We also ship to the Family Islands. Shop online and visit us on Facebook. Call Ports at 377-1771.
Get ready for an unforgettable weekend at Agri Expo 2024. It all goes down on April 12th and 13th at Gladstone Road Farmers Market. Bring the whole family for a fantastic experience. Meet local farmers, artisans, and savor delicious food from competitions to forums and activities for the kids. There's something for everyone. Whether you're a seasoned gardener or just curious about where your food comes from, there's something for everyone at the Agri Expo. It's something you don't want to miss. See you there. Since 1974, the National Insurance Board has been an income replacement safety net. But to ensure our future remains secure, starting July 1st, 2024, contribution rates will increase and will continue to be shared by employers and employees. We will be sharing more information in the upcoming months. But for now, get more details on nibrateincrease.com. Invest in tomorrow today with NIB. Because together, we can ensure our financial future. survive without my credit card machine from Fidelity. It's fast, convenient, and my clients love it. My sales increase, and I can track my earnings. Get your credit card machine from Fidelity today. Call 356-7764. ESE Distributors, the number one wholesale beauty supply in the Bahamas. Specializing in hair products, accessories, and makeup. A variety of skin lightening products. Carotone, Natural Bright, Pawpaw, and personal toiletries. Like soaps, creams, lotion, and oils. Hair products like Got To Be, Red One, and everything in the Morphos line. And lots of hair. Afro Kinky, 3X Ghana, Crochet Hair. We deliver and ship to the family islands. ESE Distributors, located on Soldier Road, opposite NCA. This is the Little Caesars Stuffed Crust Pizza. It's a whole new level of pizza with cheese stuffed crust so spectacular that there's, <gasps> there's nothing left. Pizza, pizza. A delicious pepperoni pizza with the crust stuffed with lots of cheese and brushed with butter and garlic flavor and sprinkled with Parmesan cheese. Hot and ready, simply irresistible. And only at Little Caesars in Oaksville, Carmichael, East Street South, and the Charles Sanders Highway. See Little Caesars BS on Facebook and Little Caesars Bahamas on Instagram for more info. Pizza, pizza. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station. Open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount, and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. Vehicle driver, then this story may interest you because if you're unlicensed, then it, it's only a matter of time before police traffic officers track you down. There's a school here in the capital that equips commercial drivers with all the information they need to update their licenses. Here's Jimanita Swain. We should help uh, at least um, maybe in New Providence alone over, over 5,000 individuals. To date, we only have two over 2,000 have been certified, so we got a long way to go. The Motor Vehicle Training School um, is the only school that certifies persons to get a commercial driver's license, all heavy-duty trucks and commercial vehicles, all right? The Bahamas government, you know, passed the law in July 2022, all right? And our efforts is to ensure that persons who are using the streets currently, those persons who, some of them might be out there 20, 30, 40 years, to make sure that they are certified. 
That's lead instructor at the Motor Vehicle Training School, Brad Smith. The organization for the last few years has been working to increase the number of certified commercial vehicle drivers. As for who's impacted... All of our major oil trucks or gas trucks, those individuals who haven't come in as yet because even with RQP or those big trucks, they need to get a tank endorsement. Once they can, over 118 pounds of, uh, you know, water per se. And then once you get like over 1,001 pounds of petroleum, for example, or that was fireworks, you got to come in and get a hazmat endorsement. So we implore all of those individuals to come in get certified for the right classification of vehicles they want to drive. We have a class A, a class B, and a class C. The class A basically is your combination trucks, the tractor trailers. And then the class B would be the big heavy dump trucks, cement trucks, all those big tour buses, the big yellow school buses, all right? And then the class C, you know, smaller versions of the wreckers, you know, smaller version of box trucks, jet ski operators who have pulled the pull multiple trailers. The registration process and the classes are simple. In some cases, he shares that some persons will be grandfathered in. Smith admits some people scoff at the fee for the license, which he did not disclose. However, he did talk about the fines that can be imposed compared to other jurisdictions. If you're caught driving a commercial vehicle without a commercial driver's license. The first offense is $250, second offense is $500, and the third offense you could find yourself probably when three, six months behind bars. Additionally, that's small compared to other jurisdictions. And I just um, I will give you an example, the United States. If you're caught, the driver, and their first offense, driving a commercial vehicle, that auto commercial driver's license is a $2,500 fine. The company itself will be also fined $11,000. For the Bahamas tonight, I'm Jiminita Swain. Almost 1,000 luxury drivers within the nation's number one industry now unionized. Desmond Saunders tells us about the union's new executive team's mandate and the way forward. A group of us sat together and um, decided that we wanted to make it a union uh, and work, to, to work together, basically. And that dream has now become a reality. Almost 1,000 livery drivers in the country will now receive full representation under the Bahamas Livery Drivers Union headed by Tori Austin. I just want to standardize the industry, first of all, get everybody on, basically almost on the same page. Try to see if we can all work together as one unit. And that's what the, that's what the whole thing about it being uni united. It's the unity, bringing us together and seeing how we can all work together to make our industry better. We are the ambassadors in this country. So we want to show the country and show the world who we are and what we are all about. With over 9 million in visit arrivals recorded last year, a 38% increase over 2022 and a 33% increase compared to the previous 2019 national record, the role of these luxury transportation professionals towards the overall success of the nation's tourism industry is crucial. In many instances, they're the guests' first and last point of contact, playing an essential role in shaping the guest experience. Union executives strongly believe this move is a step in the right direction. We're here to partner with all of the industry stakeholders, even down to the people at Fish Fry. When we look at every task and everyone involved in this tourism product, everyone that plays a role, we interact and we touch them. So it's maximizing on those opportunities for every individual and extending that service along with our guests. The Bahamas have transformed itself into a luxury industry, thus the um, uprising of the limousine business before everything was taxi cabs and then as the industry transformed, the need and, and the uh, desire to have these services began to become uh, in the Bahamas. So we must uh, come up with the times. With the full support of umbrella unions in the Bahamas, the president of the Bahamas Livery Drivers Union is moving with full speed and optimism to perform its mandate and ensure the Bahamas remains the premier luxury destination in the world. Desmond Saunders, the Bahamas Tonight.
After several days of fellowship and refocus, the Church of God of Prophecy's National Conclave came to an end last evening. This special event is just one of many on the church's calendar this year and makes way for the 102nd International Assembly set to take place in Orlando, Florida on July 31st to August 4th. Some 10,000 delegates are expected to attend. It's the final conclave for the church's national overseer, Bishop Dr. Franklin Ferguson, who's all set to hang up his robe and retire in August. Presiding Bishop, Bishop Timothy Coulter, brought closing remarks. I enjoy sitting with leaders in strategic planning, ways that we can maximize our capacity and leverage our resources. But those kind of meetings alone will not propel the church forward as it should go. E.M. Bounds wrote, what the church needs today is not more machinery or better, not new organizations or more and novel methods, but men whom the Holy Spirit can use, men of prayer, mighty men, and I might add, mighty women. And still to come, our feature story of the night, readying for the job market. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, The National Report. In case you missed the news or want to stay ahead, subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on X, TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. Everyone hates a dead car battery. Why not get a battery that lasts and has a 12-month warranty and is only $64.50? Intercontinental batteries are made with German technology, compatible with Japanese, U.S., and European vehicles, and adapts to warm climate. All right, good to go. These batteries are high quality, affordable, innovative, and only available at AID. Visit us online or WhatsApp us at 427-0026. AID, all you really need and more. at Immigration Care Service. You can trust us, especially if you have experienced issues or problems with the U.S. immigration at the borders. We'll do our best to provide options and solutions to immigration roadblocks so travelers can continue visiting the U.S. and residents can continue living their lives in the U.S. without worries. The best part? Our services are affordable and accessible. Take the mystery, confusion, and fear out of your immigration concerns. Contact Immigration Care Service today. You watch them grow and make plans for them even before they're old enough to talk. You spend a lifetime of sacrifice to pave the way for their success and create a tomorrow you too can be proud of. Can you tell who is the investor? At Len, we believe everyone who has ever put a penny aside for a future dream is an investor. If you're new to investing, Leno's financial experts stand ready to design plans based on your goals. Let's sit down and explore the options one-on-one -on -one and see how, together, we can make your dreams come true. Whether considering traditional investments like a new home, car, your own business, security and retirement, or your child's college fund, we take the confusion out of the process and make an investor out of you. Call 396-3225 for an appointment. Leno, your bridge to the future.
team of officers headed to Exuma to assist with investigations into an alleged drowning there. The victim, a 74-year-old Caucasian man who police say was diving in waters off Norman's Key when he began experiencing difficulties. The man was retrieved from the water and CPR administered. Unfortunately, efforts to revive him were unsuccessful. This is a matter that's under active investigation. A well-known church in Mangrove Key, Andros, doing its part to spread good news throughout that community. Shalea Jones explains. We're so busy counting how many folks are being killed. Why don't we start counting the positive things that are happening in our nation? A small community with big actions becoming a beacon of positivity. The Victoria Point community of Mangrove Key, Andros, has been hands-on in the fight for the nation's youth particularly with their youth marching band. Band director Christopher Smith Jr. says he felt it was important to engage the young men of the community. They are the future. They are the future of the Bahamas, and they have very, very bright futures, and we need them to, we need them. Of course, obviously, we need them in the Bahamas to carry and push the Bahamas forward. Island Administrator Lashante Fowler says she was overjoyed to witness this great initiative started by the Mount Zion Baptist Church. Totally blown away when I heard them. They they had also performed um, during our Christmas um, lighting ceremony and the band is practically new. Senior pastor and bass drummer Christopher Smith Sr. noted how many other islands beyond New Providence have been answering the call in the fight against crime. You look at what's going on in New Providence and you figure, okay, that's it. But that's not the Bahamas. We have many other islands that are doing wonders. There are some young men that here playing basketball. They're doing very good in sports and especially in music. For the Bahamas tonight, I'm Charlie Jones. And it's time now for a check on Family Island weather with Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Good evening, Basil. Uh, good evening, LaDawn. The cool season has not ended as yet. Frontal system passed through early. We'll talk more about that later in the newscast. But right now, outside of our studios, we have mostly cloudy skies. Temperature a very comfortable 72 degrees. A relative humidity at 68%. North-northeast winds at 10 miles per hour. The barometric pressure, 1,015.7 millibars. That is 29.99 inches. And your temperature just around the family violence this evening. They are brought to you by Family Guardian Insurance Company. We're protecting you. 67 degrees in Freeport, Grand Bahama, Grand Torquay, and uh, Marshall Babaco, the Berry Islands, 70 degrees. Alistair Bimini at 72. In Harbor Island, 71 degrees. Roxanne Elutra, 71, 72 in Otterstown, Cat Island. Black Point, Exuma, and Kemp Space, San Andreas reporting 74, 72 in Fresh Creek, Central Andreas. San Salvador at at 69 degrees, also Rum Key, 69 degrees. Georgetown, Exuma, 72. 77 in Ragged Island, Clarence Sound, Long Island, and Crooked Island. Betsy Bay, Maguana, 80 degrees. Acklands, 80. Matthew Tanya, Niagara, 83. And the Turks and Caicos Islands at 81 degrees. And your boating forecast tonight for the Northwest and Central Islands right through tomorrow. You can anticipate a northeast flow at 10 to 15 knots. The wave fights two to four feet over the ocean. Low tide takes place at 11.03. Uh, tonight, you can expect your high tide at 5.30 tomorrow morning. And for the southeast bombers, also through Wednesday, the winds are going to be north to northeast. Speeds around 12 to 18 knots to wave high 3 to 6 feet. So we're keeping that caution flag in place for the southeast bombers through tomorrow. Now, as we take into Thursday in the northwestern parts of the country, the winds become zonal. That is winds blowing from the east at 10 to 15 knots. Wave fights 2 to 4 feet. The high tide on Thursday, that will occur at 6.19 in the morning with the low tide at 12.45 in the afternoon for the central and southeastern hours on Thursday. Easterly winds as well, 12 to 18 knots, wave fight 3 to 6 feet. So bonus, exercise caution in the central and southeastern hours on Thursday. That's going to do it for your boating forecast. It's time now for your international temperatures. And they are brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. And that's going to do it for International Temperatures, brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. But stay tuned, your extended weather forecast is still ahead. I've been loving you so long. Thank you.
Want to have your voice heard? Send your letters to the editor to digitalmedia at ZNSBahamas.com. Share your thoughts on current events or positive stories within your community. That's digitalmedia at ZNSBahamas.com. We want to hear from you. For more than 30 years, the Bahamas Bridal Show has prepared thousands of brides and grooms for the walk down the aisles. On Sunday, April 7th, that tradition continues when the Grand Ballroom at Bahama is transformed into the ultimate wedding experience. Featuring a fashion show by Buttons Bridal and Formal Wear, $30,000 in prizes, savings on wedding expenses, and the most wonderful displays you'll ever see. Tickets, $60. Call 327 or visit BahamasEvents.net for details. Hello everyone, this is Tony Williams back with a special promotion for BahamasAir.com and GoGo -Go Florida. The $100 deposit is back, but it's only on your debit card. So whether you're renting that sedan, SUV, or spacious minivan for group or family trips, keep your cash in your pocket. Only $1.50 is making it convenient for you. Your $100 deposit held on your debit card. Available at Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, and Orlando. Book your eight-passenger minivan for Easter and the save. termites and need to get rid of them fast, trust Renekill Initial. With over 60 years experience in the Bahamas, the global brand, training, and expertise can't be beat. Only Renekill Initial gives you a three-year warranty and payment plan options on termite fumigation. No one can match the range of treatments we offer, such as fumigation, pre-construction treatments, termite monitoring, and more. No matter where you are in the Bahamas, we will come to you. When it comes to complete termite eradication, there's only one name, Renekill Initial. This is ZNS Total Sports. Welcome to your ZNS Total Sports Check on a Tuesday, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. Well, local car enthusiasts all in their glory this past weekend for the hosting of one of their exciting shows. Charles Fisher has the details. All the big boy toys were on display and rang it up at the Bahamas Hot Rod Association grounds on Sunday at the Queen Elizabeth Sports Center. Hot action on the track, and the sun was definitely hot as well. Didn't stop the fans from coming out, even with their umbrellas for shade. This event dubbed March Madness. Every year, um, we have a variety of cars, street cars, race cars, muscle cars, imports, and domestics. We have a great turnout. Um, we have over 30 something cars here today, and we, everyone's enjoying themselves. Um, this is a part of our rebuilding program and rebranding. Um, we want the crowds come back and see what the new BHR is all about. Uh, next month, we have another uh, exciting event um, planned. It's actually a three day event. Charles Taylor brought out his toy and ready to race, and you wouldn't believe his age. It's a 77 Oldsmobile Spitfire. It has a small block Chevy engine in it. And uh, the meet today is one that uh, it's same as if we're gonna be back on track with our track here. I am only gonna do an exhibition because uh, at the age of 80, I will just show them that I can still take it down. A more younger Kendall Pierre. I race in a swap, a K24 swap Civic 99. Uh, with nitrous. So far, the car is running good. And everything is going good so far, so we see how the rest of the day play out. Bahamas Hot Rod Association rearing up to bring the sports and fun back to the track. For ZNS Total Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. All right, Fisher, over to basketball, where our national basketball coaches have been named ahead of competition at various tournaments. Junior ladies coach Antoine Francis and senior men's coach Moses Johnson on what the coaches now need to be successful. What I've seen throughout the country, um, especially when they come down like for Father Martian and most recently in GSSA championships and BISS championships, there are not full teams. There are a lot of individual players and that makes basketball suffer a little bit because there are, you'll always see one or two very advanced players playing with players that are not on the same level. And it doesn't look always good for basketball, but it takes an eye. You need that eye test. You can't always just look at the paper and say, well, hey, um, this is something that I could build from. But you have to actually go there and scout and do an eye test, do your research and see 
some of these players that are good and could be a good contributing factor to the Bahamas basketball team. As a part of the crux of the coach selecting the coaches, they have to now also go out and aggressively start to communicate with these players. Uh, we would have um, contacts for certain players through the Federation, but it is now the mandate of these coaches to ensure that they garner the support of the athletes that are out there, because we have many athletes spread out across the United States, Canada, uh, playing in Europe. So now they have to now garner the contacts and stay aggressively contacting these persons so that when they are called upon, they, they already have, they, we've already built that relationship and rapport with them that they're able to come home and, and represent the country. Over to bowling where once again Kendall Knowles took home his second consecutive ISOC championship with a score of 661. Christian Mattis would finish second with 632 while reigning national champion Janice Hoyt was third overall with a 629 score. The ISOC tournaments held at the Point Lanes have been well received by the local bowling community. And the UB Mingos men's soccer team taking on Cavalier FC in Bahamas Football Association action in a very physical match. Mingos keeper Antonio Beckford also had a few brilliant saves to keep the Mingos spirits high. Mingos scoring starting off as midfielder Ronaldo Green took a penalty in the 36th minute and got that into the halftime period. Out of the half, the Mingos could not be stopped. Kevin Thomas scoring in the 61st minute off a brilliant toe kick and a brilliant celebration, if you will. Striker Morgan Wood getting in on the Action. He picked up a goal in the 71st minute and a penalty kick there. Midfielder Peter Jilmes had an easy goal in the 79th minute. Again, to give the Mingos the 4 0 lead, they will not be done. Green with another score from the Thomas assist. Puts the Mingos up 5-0 in the 83rd minute. He then clinched a hat trick off another penalty in the 89th minute. Mingos go on to get the win here, 6 to nothing. We were trying to build momentum going into the second half. We wanted to move the ball and break them down for the second half. Uh, we stick to the game plan, kept possession of the ball and break them down slowly. And as you can see, we score five goals in the second half. And that's it to check on sports for you here on this Tuesday. Don't go anywhere. We have our Tuesday weather just around the corner. Stay with us. This is ZNS Total Sports. Here at Immigration Care Service, you can trust us, especially if you have experienced issues or problems with the U.S. immigration at the borders. We'll do our best to provide options and solutions to immigration roadblocks so travelers can continue visiting the U.S. and residents can continue living their lives in the U.S. without worries. The best part? Our services are affordable and accessible. Take the mystery, confusion, and fear out of your immigration concerns. Contact Immigration Care Service today. The most important thing in life is family. And whenever you need reliable advice, you look to the people you know you can trust. At J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, we earn our clients' trust every day. Whether it's home, motor, travel, or commercial insurance, we've got you covered. Call 397-2100 or visit jsjohnson.com. J.S.J., Johnson Insurance, have you ever purchased a defective item and was denied an exchange or cash refund? Contact the Consumer Protection Commission at 393-779-528 or our 24-hour complaints hotline at 357-7898 and let us help your voice be heard. Hey, get on, stand up. Stand up for your life. Time now for weather. In our final look at weather, we have an extended cool season. Frontal system pushed through early this morning, and we have a second one on the way that will go through over the weekend, and that will reinforce these cool temperatures we will be experiencing over the next couple of days. Frontal boundary now making its way into the southeast Bahamas, but most of the precipitation now moving over the uh, open waters of the Atlantic just to the east of us, but there's still one or two little pockets that will affect some of the islands as it pushes through 
tonight. Our forecast for tonight, as the northwest Bahamas is concerned, skies will be clearing 68 degrees for your low temperature. And tomorrow we're looking at pleasant with less humid conditions, lots of sunshine in the forecast, high temperature at 76 degrees. And your extended weather forecast is nice weather. It's going to be with us right through Friday. But then come Saturday, we're going to see the clouds sticking up as that second frontal system pushes through. And it is expected to bring some heavy rainfall on Saturday with thunderstorms embedded in that as well. Temperatures warming up into the 80s, but once we get rid of that frontal system by late Saturday, some residual showers linger around on Sunday. Things start clearing up as we head into Monday. Temperatures dropping once again, particularly during the nighttime, where we'll see those 60s with us into the middle part of next week. LaDon. Thanks a lot, Basil. Well, students got a first-hand look this past weekend at what is needed to enter the job market and the endless possibilities on the other side of high school through the second annual Professional Connect workshop. Professional Connect owner Ronisha Smith says the inspiration for the project began when she found out her teenage son had trouble filling out job applications. She contends her greatest desire for the project is to equip students with the necessary tools to be able to adapt as professionals in an ever-changing society. I would want this to be an initiative um, in all of the senior high schools that is they would come to a workshop and it honestly doesn't have to be my workshop but just a snapshot where they can learn all of these elements in one um, and then they can be prepared for when they do graduate that they are on the job and they do know how to do these things. This is the second time that 19-year-old University of the Bahamas biology student is attending the event. He claims it's a gift that keeps on giving as he's actively in the process of making the transition from high school student to young professional. My mom introduced me to it, but I mainly came back out of my own free will because when I first came, it had an impact me in terms of like when I first started applying to jobs or whatever, or at least when I reached the age of doing so, uh, at least on my own. I found it very helpful for me to do. Felt me helpful in terms of like how can I compose myself? Um, what 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 should I do? What should I do, not do? How can I just prepare myself mentally for it? Stuff like that. What a great initiative there. Well, that does it for the Bahamas tonight, the National Report. From all of us here at ZNS, I'm LaDawn Davis. Make it a great evening, everyone. Imagine your favorite dish being cooked right before your eyes. Use your imagination and savor the flavor. Do you smell it? Can you taste it? Hold that thought. We have the right show just for you. Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. and Fridays at 2 p.m. Dishing it up. Right here on the ZNS Network. Because only the sun colors the Bahamas better. Weight management and the struggle to lose weight, the topic for this episode of Zenas Health Zone. I guess during the time I gained weight, the problem became my pressure. Um, high blood pressure and diabetes is in my family's history. Zenas Health Zone, Monday, March 25th at 9 p.m. Don't miss it. the ZNS Network, the people's station. God bless a child that has their own. This is an adage that commonly refers to owning your own home. For many of us, to achieve this dream, we have to obtain a mortgage. What happens, however, 
When you can't maintain that dream, you find yourself defaulting on payments. What do you do? Where do you go? Do you have any right or protection? Find out on The Legal Brief. a child that has their own. This is an adage that usually refers to when one owns their own home. For most of us, in order to accomplish this goal, we have to approach a financial institution and secure a mortgage. And on this show, The Legal Brief, we're going to explore 